So this is a little tutorial for some uh, notes that I wrote for PPG version 2.0. Um, the first one is set face ID tags. This is used to label the polygons that you that you selected. So in this case, I just put a wildcard in and said, I, I want all of these faces here. And it simply labels them or gives them tags based on their face ID. So obviously this is the polygon with the ID zero, this is the one with the ID one and so on. So they are labeled from zero to 28. So we have 29 polygons here. <clears throat> you can input a prefix and a postfix. It's like this, when I say I want an F before that, the labels change accordingly. So nothing special here or nothing too complicated to learn here. The one thing that I will not explain here is this store as reference. I will show this later together with um, uh, PPG Multicut and PPG Arch. Um, this is when you use this, uh, this node to store extra information in the object that, that it creates. It will store information about the faces, or actually the faces themselves, or the dimensions of the faces themselves. It will store those as a reference for later operations that are based on other um, objects or other polygons that were created on top of this polygon and that need this reference information to properly you know, subdivide in finer grades related to this parent object here. That's that's what you use for, but I will have a separate tutorial. So that's the set face ID tags. Let me remove this asterisk here and, you know, <clears throat> basically turn off the node. And I will bring in another one here, which is um, this one here, pattern rename. So let's go in a little bit. Pattern rename takes the object and I also, you know, um, uh, took these IDs here, I took from this uh, node here, the get face info node. That's also a new node, which is there to get additional information about, about selected faces. So in the node, you can say, I want a wildcard here. You can also, you know, in the face selection, you can also feed in face indices if you want. The tag expression allows you to use wildcards and several names after one another. And so you can invert, invert the whole selection, etc. And then it will spit out a number of information channels here, like the pivot position of that object or the pivot orientation of that face. The, all the IDs, the number of faces, the tags on a per face basis. Um, the points per face, which you know are basically all points of that uh, of that facet, and so on. So you can then use this information in another context. And in this case, we're going to want to use the pattern rename, which does not have a face selection like this one here, but it accepts only you know an array of face IDs that you want to rename. So let's have a look at what happens here. You remember that I turned this off here, this face ID text. I can also, you know, completely short, uh, shortcut it so that it's no longer used. And we put this directly into here. So set face ID tax is now gone. And we have only these two nodes. So this will spit out the IDs of all the faces. You could also say get all face IDs or make a sequence with the number of faces. That will result in the same. We have all indices of all faces here. And pattern rename, and I have to actually reverse here. <clears throat> so I have to reset it here. So in the pattern rename, I put in A, B, C, D, E, F as my pattern. That's my pattern string. And it will resolve it and will will then, there's a, there's a period in there. It will resolve it or, you know, turn it into a little array and then say, OK, for the first phase, we're going to use the first pattern for the second. We use the second one in the pattern, etc., until we hit the F, which is the purple one here. And then we start again, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, until the whole thing is full or, you know, all the faces have a new name. Um, now you can change the way this pattern is used. So for example, by default, it's set to loop. 
So whenever it comes to an end, it starts from the beginning again and loops and loops and loops. So you can also say, I want you to bounce. Bounce means when it reaches the end, it starts in reverse direction until it reaches the A again and then starts forward again until it reaches the F again and backward and forward. That's a bounce. A bounce plus means that it would duplicate, in this case, the last one here and the A is the first one over here and the last one and the first one. So it bounces back and forth. You can also say once the pattern is applied once you want to fill it with the you know what what's you know the the one thing that's at the end the last element will be repeated until the end or you can say stop filling and don't apply any names to the rest of it cool so if there were any names before that it would simply keep these names not overwrite them but in this case there there wasn't anything there so um, once we are on the stop here, I can show you the next one here. What's with the pattern align? When I set it from start to end, it would be aligned at the end. So it will simply shift it over at the end and then the whole thing starts backwards. So it counts backwards. So when I say a fill, for example, it will fill the rest of the array with A's because that's you know, coming from the end, that's the last thing that it sees. Or when I say bounce plus, it will bounce the A and then the F and then the A. So the whole thing simply turned round. And loop is likewise, you know, it starts from the back and, and loops to the end. You can see it here at the beginning, there will be a B instead of um, the other one. So when I reverse this pattern, it's not the same thing. You know, it, it looks a little bit like everything is just reversed, but when I reverse the pattern and this, what this reverse means here is that it reverses the whole thing. You know, once it has applied a new name to all IDs, it will reverse the whole thing. So when I do that, you see that an F is at the beginning. So, and when I change this to start here, the A will be at the beginning. So reverse, <clears throat> Now we, now we have it reversed two times. So the A is at the beginning and um, uh, with loop and start at the end, the F is at the beginning. So they, they have, uh, you know, very specific meanings, all of these flags here. Um, it's a little bit a lot, you know, to play around with them. Um, I didn't show you mirror at center. The best is when I, you know, um, put this to stop again so we have the pattern once here at the beginning when i say mirror at the center it will apply it in the center and here's the a we go forward and then you know when it comes to the end in and uh, on this end here it will mirror the whole thing over to the other side and and mirror it of course also so you see here it's counting backwards in this direction so we can apply a fill so you see it's counting backwards and then, you know, F would be the last one. And then we say bounce plus the F and the A are repeated in both directions, etc. You get the idea. So there's only one in the middle because there are only 29 of these faces here. So when I go back to the plane and I say it's a 29, I want it to have 30 faces. Then you see now the A in the middle is repeated because with an even number, it needs to repeat the first one here so that it adds up properly. So when we change it back to 29, there will be only one A in the middle where the whole thing is, is mirrored. Okay, so that's pattern rename. It's a, it's a neat way to rename things. Oh, one, one thing I forgot here, so let me turn this off, the mirror at the center. What happens and you know, you, your pattern that you can type, uh, bring in can be as long as you like. So any kind of pattern will do. It's strings, it's comma separated, so pretty easy. What if I don't have a pattern at all? Well, if that string is empty, it will auto create a pattern, which is a numbering. In this special case, this numbering is the same as the face IDs. The face IDs would also start with zero, then one, two, three, four, five, and so, etc. Um, but you know, depending on what you feed in as face IDs, these face IDs may receive different numbers. This 
Auto pattern is interesting when you do inherit source tag. You know, if there was a parent tag on the underlying uh, on the underlying geometry that these objects would inherit or these faces would inherit, that makes it clearer. You know, we're just renumbering the whole thing independently from from the face ID. Okay, so now let's do something else, and we bring in um, one other node. It's actually two, but I. You know, the most important one is one other node, which is called cluster values. So this cluster values node will take a value, this cluster value, an array of values that is related to these ones here, to the values of clusters. So think about this one here as the face IDs, for example. <clears throat> so we want to group these faces together based on certain criteria and it's a float it's a, or it's not only a float it's a it's a scalar value so this scalar value will be grouped together based on a tolerance so how far are these values together it simply takes the smallest one and starts to search around which other values or which other indices are in range and groups this one here accordingly so what comes out is a two-dimensional array of unsigned integers. So it or a yeah, two-dimensional array of the same type here, and it will you know will group them together. So in this case, what I did here was to say, hey, I have all these faces. Remember, I I selected all the faces, all the ones in this strip here, all twenty-nine, <clears throat> and it spits out these IDs. And it also spits out the face centers of these of these faces. So from this face center, I'm going to take the y coordinate and gr and start to group um, uh, to group these. So in this case, it doesn't make any sense because they're all the same height. So it's pretty boring. We need another object here, and that is this one. And we hide this one here. So I have to plug in the other object here oops come on so that's my polygon plane and i need this one as well so <clears throat> maybe i increase the resolution a little bit so we have a bit more to see that's the wrong one this one here And yeah, the labels are too big now, so we scale them down. <clears throat> okay, so right now it's simply numbered like we like we did before with a pattern rename. We simply numbered the whole thing, but then we want to group it into into vertical groups. So imagine it was a building and you want to build columns. You want to group all the ones that are on top of each other. You want to group them all together. So let's say we have the groups A, B. C, D, E, and F. Okay, so currently it simply labels them uh, sequentially and just repeats the pattern here. And now with cluster value based on the Y coordinate. So whenever they have the same Y coordinate, which is, you know, all the, all the rows that we have here. Now I want to do this. So remember, I just said this is going to be a two-dimensional array. And so far we had a one-dimensional array plugged in here, but it will also accept a two-dimensional array. And what it does now, it groups all the ones, or you know, all the similar y-coordinates together. So all of these here have the same y-coordinate, all of these have the same y-coordinate. We can do it, you know, do the game differently because this is facing in z, so the horizontal axis is the x-axis. When I say I want to group them by the x-axis, I get this. So all of the a's, the oh, it's it's counting backwards here. So all of the a's are here, the b's, c's, d's, and e's. Um, we can change the order here, so it's set to descending order. Uh, now it's going upwards. So a is here, b is here, and then we have this tolerance, and the tolerance is currently set to one. You see here one unit on the grid is pretty small, so it is not going to extend to the next one here. So I think we have to set it at least to two or three. 
So you see, when, when I set it to 2.8, it makes two columns with an A and two columns with a B and two columns with a C. So the search radius is a little bit larger and then it groups them together. This is super handy when you want to segment buildings because you can cut them you know, in, in certain areas, but sometimes, you know, the left and the right have already the same name. That's a problem. And then when you cut them horizontally, you totally lose track of all of the pieces here. And this is a way to bring them together. This node is called cluster values. So it will group the first input, this one here, according to, you know, the similarity of the second one here. These two arrays, this one here and this one here, should have the same order. So when I have face IDs in this one here, this should be the order of these X coordinates should be the same as the IDs. And that's given, you know, when you use the face gift, uh, get face info, that will do it already. So that was a short introduction to the two nodes, um, pattern rename and cluster value, and also um, get face info and set face ID tags at the very beginning.